Star Homes. So uh, the this project is actually um, so, uh, the this project has been set up. Um, try that everyone can hear properly. So this the transitional city idea where the project is setting in is that uh, we will change the way we live in the city by uh, actually uh, using densification. But this is not just about being closer to each other's, which may uh, potentially cause some problems, but, uh, but uh, about uh, rethinking the city in a different way where uh, the impact on the ground is, is uh, smaller but the quality of living is actually better. So um, this old movement of uh, a better street and better city is promoting like a more walking area, uh, the use of a bicycle and, uh, and uh, the connection, um, the uh, work on connection, street, pass and uh, uh, another area. So this is about changing a perspective about transit and changing about a perspective about living in the city and the use of the space. And this project is actually having a really small footprint because it's actually answered this need for changing the perspective we've got of, uh, of the living area. And so this, this whole project is a shift to actually reduce the impact on the environment and uh, give more um, um, possibility to develop the land for uh, food production and and uh, and for a natural uh, uh, environment and, and other spaces. So if we look at the story of, of the impact of uh, construction and the residential construction um, uh, in Australia and uh, we compare it to other countries, the uh, average surface area of uh, dwelling for a family in 2008 for Australia was 214 square meters. This is actually really huge and that's one of the biggest uh, um, average surface area in the world. You can compare it to the United States and in that we are not really, really good. Um, there is two reasons for that. Uh, once we live, uh, we're really lucky to live on this land that is really big compared to the density of population. So there is no uh, strain on the surface area of the land that happened before. And uh, and, and the other reason is the mild um, 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 weather in, in Australia. But so if you, you see Hong Kong and China, for example, they've got a really small surface area because there is a high density. But a country like Sweden or Canada have a lower surface area just because the uh, difference of temperature in between outside and inside is so great that really there is a real sort done for 100 years about minimizing the space that you need to cool down or warm up. 
And, uh, and so this is this logic we want to involve in the building now that we have uh, this care about the land and we want to uh, work toward densification. So this is the site of, of the project. This is happening in Woodford on the east side, as I mentioned before. And there is a development that has been done by starfish there. And is, here is the land where the tensor has been built. Uh, this is 310 square meters, so this is a really small land. And the idea is to actually uh, offering a design that can be fitted in uh, an affordable land in the city for uh, an average family. So, um, this is really important to actually uh, think sustainability if you want to have an impact in a bigger scale to make that affordable for the majority of the people. So that's the exercise that was done there. And so uh, Jim Woodcock bought this land to be able to actually use the work that has been done on the Ten Star competition to create a real uh, construction and uh, demonstrate uh, what a Ten Star home is, have the possibility to monitor it and, and go back uh, to improve actually the star rating system and the way we build and, and learn and transmit and support the industry toward that. So that's a huge um, uh, uh, expectation for this building. And this is a pilot building. I mean, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a really small number of 10 star home in Australia. And I wonder if it's not the first one in, uh, in South Australia. So that's a huge commitment for us. Um, so this is a small uh, um, building. I mean, for a family, uh, if you look at it, it's only 116 uh, square meters for three bedrooms. So this is a small on the footprint. But um, the way it is set up with the height in the building and the functional space, it's actually look pretty big inside. Um, so. The idea is to actually creating some new typology that will actually enhance the benefits of, of living on small uh, footprint. So this is less to pay, less to warm and cool, and uh, we'll come back on the fact that uh, it's a condition, reducing condition area is really good in terms of sustainability. And it's also less to clean, to worry about, and so this is about um, putting um, your energy and your money in life in uh, more um, sustainable things and, and things that make people happy. There is also a great connection happening in between inside and outside that uh, help also to create this non-conditioned area uh, and to consider it as a living uh, space too. So reducing the carbon emission, um, the carbon emission in the industry and especially the uh, residential industry has a huge impact on the uh, global carbon emission. And um, this is our responsibility to actually uh, uh, acknowledge and, uh, and, and, and work on that. So uh, one of the points that uh, we'll start with is, uh, we start with is like how did the site actually impact uh, uh, in terms of carbon emissions. So this is about the production of the material, uh, the transport of the material, but this is also about um, how the site uh, is actually organized. So you actually recycle and, and, uh, and uh, use less chemicals and impact on less. less. So uh, we've been working with a case up to org that organize a toolbox for the site. And uh, we're really proud to, um, to say that 97% uh, of the uh, waste product on site has been recycled. So this is a really uh, great outcome of it. So after that, there is the impact of the whole industry, the impact of the site, and also the re impact of the material recycled, and also the production of uh, heat electricity in the building. And so uh, we've We've been putting a great effort in uh, the energy consumption of the building. So that's a meeting with the whole team with uh, KSAP and, uh, and how um, the way uh, education has been put into the site, uh, before site and on site, to actually reduce the waste. So the energy efficiency, uh, if I come back to it, like the average uh, house in, South in uh, Australia at the moment is 5.4 star. And, uh, and this is just for new construction. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, it will change uh, with a new uh, residential code. 
but uh, the objective of uh, the council and the res residential code at the moment is six stars and uh, and so it's just like this graph gives you an idea about where we are in between like six stars consumptions and uh, with 96 megajoules square meters per year when a, a 10 star is 3 megajoules so you can convert like see the difference of energy use and consider that we really um, nearly in a passive building there. Passive, that means that uh, if we consider 3 megajoules of heating and cooling, we can probably uh, actually get rid of heating and cooling. And that's what has been done actually in this house. So we can monitor the real effect on the building. So this is a simulation that has been done uh, by the software. And we can see that most of the hours of the year uh, are actually uh, in, a, in the range of 22 degrees, which is a really comfortable uh, temperature for a building. And so we can see that there is only a few uh, hours in the year where we're actually outside of the comfort zone. So this is a graph showing you the temperature in the bedroom between, uh, being in between 20 and 90 degrees all the year long, so that's really uh, good. And the red line is uh, uh, outdoor temperature. So how do we design a house like that that is uh, this efficient? Uh, this is about having a compact envelope. We spoke about footprint, but this is also about introducing some uh, really important principle. And one of the design principle that really matters uh, in the first phase is solar sort of passive design. So I will come back in a few points about that. I will not develop because we could do a whole seminar about it. Uh, some other aspect that we worked on is a clean energy production. And then we will look at how we actually went into the detail of the envelope to um, making what we call smart, uh, which is actually controlling layers and, and acknowledging air tightness um, uh, potential and things like that. The choice of the material has been also participating to the old sustainable um, um, engaging work. So passive design, there is a few different aspects of passive design we take into consideration when we actually uh, design houses. And, uh, and uh, one of the important things is to actually consider which climate zone you're in. So one design done in South Australia will be really different than the design done in Darwin, as the temperature are really different and, uh, and the impact of the sun on the building is really different, the winds are different, and the moisture in the air. So um, this is really uh, connected to uh, where you are and uh, the first rate five uh, file actually acknowledge that. The orientation of the building is really important. We work with the sun and with the path of the sun, like not tree in orientation, but a real path, or um, a way to model give us the opportunity to actually simulate that all the year long, so and all the day long at different uh, time of the year, so we can actually check how the light coming, what is the impact on the glass, uh, on the material, and that's a really good way to work with passive design. So you can see here that the light with the sun is coming in, uh, in a great way uh, in, uh, in winter when at the uh, uh, summer equinox uh, there is no actually direct light in the building. That will help to actually keep the warmth from the sun inside in winter and actually exclude any of a war war warming in, in uh, summer. So uh, to add to this um, design with hovering and so on, we also are creating some different system of shading. And you can see a few of them here. So there is a pergola outside, but there is also a calculated length of uh, overhang. And uh, we had it actually in this project, some uh, Venetian outside, uh, some Venetian blind that will uh, give us the opportunity to actually really regulate the impact of the light from outside. So that's a great device because um, we can actually uh, have control on the light before it's actually reached the glass. Um, the, actually, the windows are uh, argon filled and, uh, and, uh, and triple glazed, so they also uh, constitute a great filter. If you look at the, uh, some other principle of the passive design, the mass is actually really impacting on the on the on the model. And so this house is a reverse brick house. That means that uh, all the walls are actually uh, um, clad inside with bricks, 
and uh, these bricks uh, delivered by PGH are, are giving uh, aesthetical value to the building, but they also maintain uh, uh, and regulate the temperature. And uh, this, uh, with the uh, really dark concrete floor, will actually really uh, act as a heat storage and uh, and a cool storage uh, in summer. So you can see like 52 uh, cubic meter of brick and 305 cubic meter of concrete, which is quite uh, a great amount of mass in the building. Uh, so another aspect after uh, going through a few of the aspects of the passive design, and there is a, again a lot more of that, um, the renewable energy strategy. So uh, there is a strong decision to go to all electric. First, because this is for us the possibility to really uh, offer a clean energy to a building. So to, by excluding gas or any petrol uh, solution uh, or coal solution, we actually really uh, look toward future. And so um, an, an, uh, an important way to, to work is to actually look at every device you put in the house, whether it's a light that we actually supply, led by a, a beacon, or, or the, the reality, the appliance, the, the, the heating system, the heat pump, and the HRV are also uh, really uh, energy, uh, good energy rated. And so there is a production of 5 kilowatt solar panel on the roof that has been delivered by Tindo. This is kind of an average uh, um, solar panel production, but what it is showing is that if you actually uh, work uh, with a really good uh, passive principles, you actually don't need to cover uh, a lot of uh, energy use, and that's it's better. So we can add to the system the, the uh, React2 inverter and the uh, uh, batteries that has been delivered by uh, ABB. So by doing that, like we, we can really cover the, the, the use of energy of the house and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and consider that we can we could go easily out of the grid with it. So there is also a, a car ch a charger, electrical car charger, because we also believe that electricity will be everywhere and in the car tomorrow, so we can really um, look uh, toward a really clean energy future. For sure, there is uh, a reflection down about water collection, and actually, uh, Stephen Eltron, as well as the heat pump and uh, the heat recovery system, supply us with water filtration. And we've got a like 3,000 liter uh, water tank in the back of the house that is connected to the laundry and toilet, as it should usually be done. The cooktop is interesting. We've got a downdraft that is actually recycling uh, the exhaust air. Uh, because we choose the, to put the HRV system, we've got a really airtight building, then uh, there is no exhaust outside of the air in the kitchen, so we use some new technology that are actually really common now in Europe to actually recycle air inside. When I speak about smart envelope, um, this is um, the, the, the 10 star objective bring us in a really big level of insulation, which is great. But we, we, we pushed the, the work beyond that because increasing the insulation is actually uh, sinking the wall differently. And if you don't acknowledge what is coming with the stick insulation and the system of construction that is bringing out, you may just pass on with some other problems that are not in the build yet. So it's not only about improving the insulation, but it's also looking at, at air tightness. So you can actually improve the building with um, having a no air infiltration in the building, but you have to consider also like uh, water transfer and other aspects uh, in the building. So what has been done is like we've got ventilated roof here with a blanket on top and these rafters that are uh, each joist so a pretty a standard system of, of uh, roof uh, are actually filled with uh, blowing insulation. So we achieve R10 in the roof. Uh, a strategy about air tightness is also to create an uh, airtight barrier and, uh, and a decision that has been made on this project and that is really like um, helping with uh, achieving good air tightness is to actually use uh, a service layer so there is a no penetration, possibility of penetration in between the insulated and airtight layer 
and uh, the service layer. And this method is used in the whole building, in the wall and in the roof. We actually have riser inside to bring it all the electrical, so we don't have, we minimize the number of penetration in the building, so it's easier to set up on site. The wall are our 4.5 walls, so we've got insulation in the stud and outside insulation that allow us to really uh, look at the thermal breaching uh, issue. And so uh, that's helping also um, focus on this building and uh, using Kingspan panels. The Kingspan panels actually have a reflective effect on the outside, and we also have a reflective layer. Uh, created by the air cell permit gap in size into this uh, ventilated gap so we actually uh, improve the effect of mass of the brick system. So uh, working about air tightness is really important especially when you want to be efficient in your ventilation system when you want to save more energy. So if we look at the uh, 3 kilojoule, uh, 3 uh, megajoule a year per square meters and that we add a HRV system then we can consider the building to be passive you know because again you will improve the efficiency of the building not only by through the calculation of the first rating but uh, through the air renewal in the building that is actually uh, um, um, energy efficient. So we work on the air tightness and uh, uh, one of the uh, known uh, way to work on the air tightness is to actually use the red uh, pen light. So uh, I will recommend that you go uh, to see the webinar of Jess about uh, air tightness and you will have a lot more information about those things because it's a whole world by itself. But what I, I just can mention for this project is that has been considered greatly in the project. And so uh, by using uh, thermal broken windows with uh, triple glazing, by, uh, by having, uh, um, by, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the help of Klima Show that give us some great uh, consulting advice on uh, how to achieve air tightness in the build, we actually obtain a really good result at the first air tightness test at the end of the first fix. So this is a result that is close to passive our standard which is uh, for us uh, a great achievement. Also uh, guarantee that the uh, HRV system will be uh, completely efficient. So as I mentioned before, this is by creating service layer that we uh, could achieve this. Uh, I mean, it's not necessary to have those service layer to be able to do that, but in terms of uh, uh, site managing, it's nothing compare. And so um, people with size experience will uh, will really uh, uh, acknowledge this. So um, by having an airtight building, we also, um, by putting an HRV, ensure that the building is actually having a really health, healthy air inside. And so GeoExchange installs this um, uh, system delivered by Stable Eltron, and they both partner in the project. So this, uh, their contribution has been great on there. Uh, and so having a really airtight building, we've got like 90% heat recovery possible uh, on the system of HRV. That means that uh, the air is renewed inside of the building, fresh air with uh, oxygen in and a low level of CO2, but we don't lose the benefits uh, of, of the mass and the, and the passive heating because the air coming from inside is actually warming up or cooling down the air coming from outside. So this is like, if you use a building uh, with natural ventilation that is activated by windows opening, you have the benefits of, of, uh, of the ventilation, but you may lose the benefits of the heating cooling system in the house. And that is not okay with the HRV. And at the end, I will, uh, I will just speak about uh, the material. Uh, so you can see that there is also a great achievement in terms of aesthetic with the use of uh, healthy material and so we, uh, we uh, recognize a sustainable source wood and uh, some of our partner could offer uh, like the plasterboard is green rated certificate, um, is having green rated certification so and this is some material that has a real um, impact on sustainability all over the chain. We use non-toxic components 
Um, if you look at, for example, the Finnish tab where they're not, they're not loaded with Chrome, so the fact that uh, consolidate, consolidate a brass tab where a participate to the project allow uh, give us the opportunity to present some alternative to uh, Chrome Finnish, which is a lot healthier for the inoccupant and the long-term vision of, of the plumbing. And, uh, and uh, we use a uh, really low VOC paint and table treatment because uh, there is also a real um, perspective on offering uh, actually internal dwelling that are not uh, creating internal pollution. So here we are. And uh, on top of that, uh, um, a great uh, home automation system has been installed. This home automation is uh, actually helping also to improve uh, the efficiency of the building by controlling the outdoor shadings and the window opening and the fans. So we can actually program some, uh, some kind of aspect of the house. So if the inhabitants are not in the house, they can also activate those elements that work with the weather. So there is an internal uh, weather station and an outdoor uh, with a station that can work with those programs and uh, that's also a way to centralize information and give uh, real-time data uh, to the uh, user so they can actually know where the energy go in the house and how they can improve it by their use and uh, and they also can program a distancing some aspect and it also gives you a great comfort like in terms of, of uh, using the light and the windows so the ABB system has been installed and thanks to a smart automation a monitoring system will be installed in the house so we can actually have feedback on uh, whether this house is actually performing according to the simulation that has been done by the software. So uh, in terms of uh, progressing in the industry and looking toward the future it would be great because we will be able to um, point out what is working or not working in terms of a connection in uh, uh, in the model and also uh, and have a real uh, view on where the electricity use happen into such building and and probably give us the opportunity to go even further in this field so uh, thanks to our a lot of our partner we could actually achieve this project this year and, uh, and you will be, uh, soon be able to visit um, this house. Uh, the opening was supposed to happen in this May, but the situation uh, is pretty complicated, as everyone knows. So uh, I recommend that you go and do um, a live visit with uh, Sam that is promoting a webinar where you can actually see the whole house and, uh, and, uh, and have a taste of what uh, can be a 10-star home. Um, we're really proud of this project too because it's not only clever and energy efficient, it's pretty. And, uh, and it's really important for us to assure that there is still a, a commitment and possibility to do architectural project with uh, aesthetic and design. And that's in, in no way um, the sustainable aspect of a project is an entree to uh, the aesthetic of it. So thanks to our Blue Scope, James Hardy and uh, Revolution Roofing partners, we have a really nice setup outside for the cladding. And uh, and uh, I want to thank all the sewers that have been involved, whether they're uh, as the consultant, engineers, and uh, and all the chain of people that has worked in many different stages in this project because it has been a really, really great journey. Thank you. So I will try to come back on the chat. There were a few conversations happening there. Do you have a follow up or personal test after reading it to control? Well, actually, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we will actually monitor the house uh, for uh, two years uh, without and without an occupant, so we can actually compare uh, the real result of the build with the rating. Now, this said, uh, there is a lot more than the parameters entered in the software uh, for rating in this house. So, and that's one of the things that was really interesting to look at. It's how 
uh, actually the rating uh, is not involving, for example, um, a construction detail and a, a, a great work has been done this way and the, and the choice of some materials wouldn't be in the in the software too. So, so um, it's, it's, it's a really great tool to actually um, question and, uh, and uh, the, the, the simulation of the building and give some insight about it. Yes, so there were there were, there were uh, airtight tests uh, made at the end of the first week, and there will be one hopefully next week because it's quite windy at the moment uh, uh, to the final product. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate. And uh, and yeah, I uh, will leave you there. Uh, yeah, uh, just just take the time to go on her site if you want some more information. And uh, there will be some other presentation by my colleagues. And uh, we will we will be always really happy to answer any question about this building as it's uh, it it was made to be a demonstrative one and uh, and also to provide a support uh, to think about sustainability in the future. Thank you. <laughs>